Hello everyone, it's C3 Maniac. Welcome to my speedrunning tutorial for Descent 3. In this first video, we're going to be going over how I set up my game, the control layout that I have, um, basic movements that we'll be using in the Descent 3 speedrun, and weapons. So let's start it out with the setup. So a lot of this, the settings are just personal preference, but some of them um, do affect the speedrun. So for example, your screen resolution, you should probably have it set to 640 by 480 because that's the same screen resolution as the menus are in this game. So when you're going back and forth between menus and gameplay in between levels, there is a little bit of lag in the display when it has to switch screen resolutions. So it's best to just not have to switch. Um, I like to have vertical sync off because it just makes frames display that much faster. Personally, I don't like the fast headlight, but all the other toggles you can turn on if your computer can handle it, probably should be able to. This game's pretty old. Um, you definitely want to have auto level off because what auto level will do is if you are, um, if your ship is rolled slightly, it's gonna want to gravitate you towards being level again. But we're gonna want to be rolled slightly for just about the entire run, and using auto level makes that tricky. So. Definitely gonna wanna have that off. And I think that's just about it for settings. Um, on to controls. How I have my control set up is I use my left hand on a keyboard with um, W, S, A, and D, and space and shift to control my, my movement axes. Um, w, S for forward and backward, A and D for left and right, space and shift for up and down. Um, and the only other thing I use my left hand for is switching between weapons using the number keys up top. 1 through 0. Um, everything else I use a joystick for with my right hand. So with my joystick I have my pitch with the Y axis of the joystick, heading with the X axis of the joystick, and um, my bank or roll I control by twisting the joystick. Um, you're going to want to have, whether you put it on your keyboard or on your mouse or joystick, whatever you use, you're going to want to have um, your inventory items, using them and switching between them. You're going to want to have firing your primary and secondary weapons, firing your flares, and fire and using your afterburner. Those are the really important things that you're going to need throughout the run. You don't really need countermeasures. You don't really need audio taunts. You don't really need any of these like toggling axes. Um, those are the main things. Firing your weapons, flares, afterburner, and inventory. The afterburner button in particular, you're going to want to bind it to a button that you're very comfortable mashing or pressing really quickly, because that's a basic movement technique throughout the run. So that's just about it for settings and controls. Let's load up a level, and I'll show you some movement and weapons. Let's just go to level one. Another basic thing I might as well cover now is there will be these cutscenes where the camera pans around your ship at the beginning of the level, um, or sometimes in the middle of a level. After a certain point in the cutscene, if you press um, a movement button, or maybe any button, um, the camera will jump into your ship and you'll be able to move earlier than normal. So what I like to do is I just like to mash buttons throughout the cutscene so that I get the button press that jumps me into my ship as soon as possible. So here's what happens if you don't do any button presses. It's a long, boring cutscene. Takes, what, seven, eight seconds, depending on the level. And then finally we're in our ship. Or I'll just jump back to level one. If we mash buttons, as you'll probably hear over the microphone, Boom, already in my ship. So that's a very basic thing you're going to want to do in pretty much every level. Um, so, speedrunning, we like to go fast. The basic way that the developers wanted you to do that is use your afterburner. Um, so your afterburner is that red number in the lower middle of your heads-up display. Um, your afterburner actually goes the fastest when it's above 85 on that red number. So... You're pretty much never going to want to have your afterburner go below there. 
unless you're doing like a really quick maneuver to end a level because whenever you use a lot of your afterburner it's going to have to recharge and then you're going to be moving pretty slowly um, as you recharge your afterburner so only if there's not going to be you're not going to need to recharge your afterburner that's like the only time you're going to want to use an extended burn on your afterburner instead what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to rapidly press and release the afterburner button I find this pace for pressing and releasing to be pretty good. You don't need to go like super ultra fast. I find that's not as effective, but also doing bursts like that makes movement a little choppy. So I think right here is like the Goldilocks zone for that. So as I said, you want to keep it above 85 on your afterburner count. Um, yeah, that's the most effective way to use your afterburner. The way that the developers didn't intend you to go fast that we'll be making great use of is called tricording. And basically what that is, is um, moving on multiple axes at once and due to some flukes in geometry and the physics engine of this game, that actually gives you a speed boost in whatever direction you're moving. So if we move in one direction, you know, pretty slow. We can move in two directions at once, and we'll move at about 130-140% of normal speed. Um, but since this is a three-axis game, we can move on three axes at once. It is a little awkward to get used to, because obviously you're not facing in the direction that you're moving, making shooting at things or seeing where you're going hard. But it's very worth it. You move about... 165% um, of normal movement speed. And when you combine that with um, mashing the afterburner button, you get some pretty quick movement. And I'm not making a very good demonstration of how smooth it can be, but once you get used to it, you can fly around these levels. Look how much faster that is than just moving normally. I think it's about 210% of normal movement speed. So basically, just do that for the whole game, you're speedrunning it. Um, the only other things you know need to know about are the basics of how to use the weapons in this game. Um, lasers you're going to use for the beginning of the run, but once you get super lasers, uh, you don't really want to use them. Super lasers are better in every way because they're exactly the same except they do more damage. So use super lasers. Um, your super lasers are mostly going to be for combat, destroying enemies quickly. Um, the other weapon you can use for this that I find just as effective is plasma. It does the same damage per second. Um, it just shoots twice the projectiles. Um, but So it has double the fire rate, but shoots half the projectiles at the time. Um, but it has the same damage per second. So it's really just a matter of preference which one you use. I find that using plasma at close range works better because the projectiles move a little bit slower than super lasers. The super laser projectiles move a little bit faster. So using them at a medium range is more effective. Um, most of the primary weapons you're not actually gonna use. Microwave is not very useful, Napalm's not very useful, EMD is not very useful, and the Omega Cannon is not very useful. The Voss Cannon is your best friend, because since it gets to its destination almost immediately, you can open doors super quickly with it. And believe it or not, doors are a really big part of this game, because if you're just using, like, let's say, plasma, and you come up to this door and you shoot it, you get stuck on the door as it's trying to open. But let's go back out and say that in theory we somehow have a boss cannon in level 1. We're going up to this door, we shoot it with our boss cannon and it's already open by the time we get there. So you're definitely going to want to use the boss cannon a lot throughout this run. It's also useful for um, bullying robots and knocking them out of the way if you're trying to move by. Um, so that's another really good use for the boss cannon. Like this, or there should be a guy right here. There he is. You can just knock robots around. It stuns them so they can't shoot you as effectively. And um, it also pushes, literally pushes them out of your way so you can move past them a little more freely. Boss cannon is extremely useful. 
Mass Driver you're going to be using basically only in level 13 to kill the Stormtroopers. And the Fusion Cannon you're going to be using basically only in level 14 to kill the Sharks. But we'll get there when we get there. All of the secondary weapons you're going to be using at some point throughout the run. You're going to want to have easy access to your concussion missiles. Um, after the first couple levels you can just use those however you want. You will have a surplus of them definitely. Same thing with homing missiles, after the first couple levels you'll have a surplus of them and you can just use them for regular combat. Impact mortars are very important to manage because they're an instant kill for almost every oops, for almost every robot in the game. And there's no splash damage if you wow, I'm doing a terrible shot today. There's no splash damage even at point blank if you directly hit a robot. So they're very good for just like running up into a robot's face and giving them one giving them one good impact more and then they're just done. So Managing those later on in the game is very important and you're going to want to get good at like using your afterburner to boost the impact mortars further than they normally go. See that one went only a little bit, but if you use your afterburner they'll go quite a bit further. And I think that is about it for weaponry. So I will see you guys next time on the speedrunning tutorial of level 1 of Descent 3. Thanks for watching.